shine, guys. Good side one. Those of you who are not from Hawaii, uh, watching my channel here, uh, these are called um, Oamas. They're a type of a goat fish. They have these little whiskers that come down and they, they get to be pretty big. Um, but uh, a lot of local fishermen here, they get these to use as bait and they try to get the bigger, the fish that I catch, the Uluas, the Omilus, the Papios. They love this fish. And then some of us actually like to eat them. They're very, very tasty, um, especially when you fry them. So that's why you'll see a lot of guys with little, little sticks, and they're on there about knee deep, and they're fishing in the water. They're basically trying to catch these. They're they're limited to uh, I think 50 per person in a day. Okay, we're here with Kristen, and Kristen, what do you do here in this facility? What is this place? <laughs> well, right now, um, we're at Nui Nui Fisheries Research Center, uh -huh. and I actually don't spend very much time here, luckily. Um, oh, I good. get to go out in the community and join people at fishing tournaments, or right. go to school. Expos, we see you there. Expos, right, right. Yeah. So my goal is mainly not to be in the office at all, but sometimes you what know a you, have to, job. you have to manage the grants and fix the paperwork. And <laughs> Someone's got to do it, right? Yeah. Great. Like so mainly, what are what, what right now? What are you promoting? What's your what's your yeah. main? So activity? our our program name is the Marine Wildlife Program. So okay. as you can tell from the name, we're here to help our marine wildlife. So okay. that's any of our endangered species. So anything from monk seals, mm -hmm. sea turtles, false killer whales. We're gonna add. Um, manta rays and oceanic white tip sharks. Okay, so what's wrong well. with the manta rays? What's going on with that? Oh, so they're all just going to be listed as endangered species. So are they, are people taking them or they're just dying off? What is Yes, the... they are being um, fishing pressure really? for the pelagic manta rays. Well, mm -hmm. Why would people want the manta rays? What's the, um, is it for aquariums or is it they're eating it? Eating or, it. They're eating it. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, so a lot of um, Things that we call scallops are more hole punched wings of the rays. Really? Unbelievable. A okay. lot of like fish and chips sort of stuff is right. some sharks. I'm sure you've heard of that. Why, it's not right, right. fish. Yeah. Oh wow. That's mm -hmm. crazy. I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, so, so the manta know. rays and what's the other species? Oceanic white tip sharks. Oh white tips. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've seen those around my feet sometimes. No, the oceanic ones, not the, the, the reef. Oh, not the reef yeah. ones. These the are ones with like the super round fins. I've never yeah. seen those. Because they're super far out pelagic. Okay. Sharks. How big yeah. do they get? Um, I think up to eight feet, but usually they're a little smaller. Oh, okay. Really fast. They're really cool looking. We should look up oh, a picture. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sh I'll put a picture in the yeah. video so people can... It's the whole shark. I thought you just meant white tip because I've no. seen the white tip and the black tips out there. And sometimes when I'm fishing... Yeah. And you know how you pierce the the brain and blood comes out. Yes, and they, they come. They smell right that away. in two two seconds. Does anything ever happen? Or they're just. Yeah, no. I would. I was uh, about waist to chest high fishing Ooh, out on the reef. Oh, that's pretty deep. Yeah, and then you know it was a it was a very very what's that called a super tide or whatever. Oh, the king tide. The king tide. Yeah. And I didn't realize how far it went. I thought it was like two feet, but it went to two point eight or something that day, and it went up to my chest. So and then I. I was on a rock about waist high, and I was going in. My f my fish was bleeding, and then they came out of nowhere. Wow. So I had to actually chuck the fish out. I had the toe out, so I was chucking them out far. So they, so they go out. there, and I was going in. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was a little scary. scary. Yes, Good. that's pretty deep. <laughs> and we're not talking about one. We're talking about like five, oh. seven of them, you know, yeah. you know, three, four feet, and they could do some damage. Yes, they could, so, for sure. Even yeah. a little shark could do some damage. So that's one, one of my scary experiences I had with the, with the sharks, you know. And, and that was walking on the reef. I usually take my board out. And so basically what you do is you get your little oamas, a little bit of water, and then just scrape.
They really come off real easy. Scales come off real easy. The favorite on. part of this fish for me is actually the head. After you fry it and then the head is unbelievable. So nice. And actually the tail too, the tail gets all crunchy. So thank you Roy for this gift. Appreciate it. These were just caught the other day, so they're very fresh still. And a lot of people use this as bait, you know, to get the uh, the luas or the omilus or the papillos. Just cut a cut it right there, cut it over here, and then just with your finger, just take out the guts. And pretty much that's it, like that, guys. That's it, no scales, good size, ready to eat, ready to fry actually. Yep, so um, basically through our job we're just trying to figure out the human aspect of why our animals are endangered. So mm -hmm. anything from, so one of the things that causes the animals to die is diseases. And actually humans have a hand in that because one of the things that we're dealing with a lot now is toxoplasmosis. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. No, I have not. So it's actually from cat feces getting in the ah, water. Ah, yes, wings. I've heard of mm -hmm. that. Okay. So I have a little thing. It's right here. Actually. Ah. Yeah. Yes. So, Hawaii Kai, big problem over there. <laughs> so disease brought to the islands because of humans because we brought cats over here and now yes. they're overpopulated. So and they're, they're killing off the seals, correct? Yes. Yeah, so seals. the toxoplasmosis will get in the water, and then perhaps the monk seals will eat the tilapia or drink that water. Um, now, that's a different disease from ciguatera, right? That's a completely yes, different... Yes, completely different. Okay, yeah, bacteria. ciguatera okay. is from an algae. Algae, okay. Yeah, so this will affect um, the seals' nerves, and they eventually end up kind of like going brain dead. Wow. It's pretty wow. interesting. <laughs> that's and scary. Then, the other things we like to talk to people about are just disturbance. Mm -hmm. So as we know, our monk seals haul out on land, and so do our sea turtles. And okay. the sea turtle thing is really interesting. Okay. Um, they don't really do it anywhere else in the world. Let's definitely learn behavior here in Hawaii because they are protected and they do feel so safe. Oh, right, right, right. And in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands where there aren't any humans, they also bask up there. So okay. um, they probably don't need it for survival, but uh, since they are endangered, it's best to leave them alone. Right. Same with the monk seals, and they so. do need right it here. for their survival. Yeah. So that's our hotline <coughs> phone number. We try to promote that. Um, and it's for anyone to call if they ever see a seal, sea turtle, whale, anything that looks like it's possibly dead or um, hooked or in distress. Um, also, if you okay. ever see monk seals hauled out and you're in a remote location, if you can get an ID on the seal, which would be their flipper tags, okay. they have numbers and colors. Oh, that's interesting. And if you could call that in, we kind of want to know all the information we can. I've never seen seals. a dead seal out in the water. I've seen turtles dead, mm -hmm. and I usually leave them alone because yeah, usually they're stuck in the reef and they're, you know, like mm -hmm. flobbing. So I'm just, you know, the, I'll let the yeah. nature take care of the, yes. the turtles. So we would also want to call about that because we <coughs> use, um, we will do a necropsy. It's the same thing as like a human autopsy. Oh, okay. And that way we learn <coughs> cause of death or anything else going on and it could possibly uh, tell us about something that might be affecting more species oh, down okay. the line. We currently... Um, That's the number right there, huh? Yeah. 800 number, mm -hmm. right? 888. Okay. 888. Okay, yeah. well, definitely. So when we spot one, what do we do? We just tell you, we, we, we say we're at a certain spot. It's about 200 feet out. Yeah, I mean, if you have a GPS, that's even oh, better. Oh, okay. But when you call that line, it's automated, so it will ask you which island you're on. Oh, okay. And then it will ask what animal you're calling about. Okay. And then you'll get a person. So you have to go through a few okay. things. Okay, that's not a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. And we really like to talk about our hawksbill sea turtles. Okay. Um, because they are still very endangered. The greens are now threatened. They're doing really, oh, wow. really well. As we all know, we see them. Now, how many species of turtles are in Hawaii? There are five, five. that are okay. around, but they don't come to our shores. Okay. But only the two that come to our shores are the greens and the hawksbill. Okay. So further out, you might see... So Lani Kea has a lot of turtles on yeah. the beach, and that's where the tourists go. Yeah. Those are the, the green? The greens. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the ones, and the greens are vegetarians. Yeah. Now there's turtles most that are, or most of them are? Mostly vegetarians. Like, they're okay. omnivores if it's easily available. So that's the reason they oh, bite the hooks. Okay. So if there's a dead piece of fish just sitting there floating, right? they'll come by and be like, hmm. Which is why they do get hooked. Okay, yeah, I uh, hooked um, with Ika. Yeah. The squid, they love that. They do. So when I see a lot of turtles, I usually move on because yeah. the chances of catching a turtle in those places right. are very high. Mm -hmm. And which brings us actually a good point where, what are you promoting right now? All right, we are promoting barbless circle hooks. So I thought we had some that weren't attached. I think they're right here. <laughs> they're stuck on That's the back. Great. Oh no, these aren't barbless. These are this the regular one ones, alright? So this one's barbless and okay. this one's barbed. Oh, I see. So this is a method of to see which oh, one comes off early. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to try it out with the camera there? Well, I can imagine. Yeah. It's so much easier. <laughs> and then this one here is just impossible because it's just going to rip your whole skin out. Yeah. Oh. So it's not going to stop the animals from biting the hook, definitely. Yes. But it'll definitely help them. Even uh, the fish, because when we're fishing, we lose a lot of our gear. And if the hook and line is stuck on the bottom, right. and it's just floating there, something might still come by and bite it, and they might be able to get off the hook easier. And as you know, we go to a lot of tour tournaments, and there's a lot of barbless circle hook challenge portions of right, the tournaments. Right, right. And a lot of the times, the winners, just like, for example, this last year, the winner of the Tok S. Tokunaga tournament every year right. was on a barbless circle hook. Beautiful. So they still do catch. Yeah. Now, um... What is what? Why is the push for barbless? Is is there a reason that that started this whole movement? Is was it uh, to preserve? To preserve all of our endangered species, there's not very many things we can control. Mm -hmm. In when we were losing uh, the animals, the monk seals were declining rapidly. The sea turtles were. Luckily, right now we've been doing a good job as humans, and the populations are rising. Right. But at one point, there were so few seals that they were headed towards extinction. And that was because of the, f the fishing itself? No, no, so many other things. Oh, okay. Shark predation, disease, lack of food. Oh, I see. Environmental issues, but okay. the things, we can't control that. Right. We can control how many we catch. So even losing one or two a year was a huge deal. Oh. And we were catching at least one or two. Usually we have about 30 interventions a year uh -huh. where Meaning you see a seal with a hook in it, and you physically go out, capture the seal, and take the hook out. So you don't know if those would have been mortalities or deaths. Oh, right, right. So, yeah, it, yeah, it, it could lead in that direction. So that's preventing. Up. Oh, I see. And then, a lot of times, they do do surgery on the seals when they swallow it. Right. And um, oh, recently, maybe two years ago, a juvenile seal swallowed a hook, and it got stuck kind of in the fleshy part of the throat. Ugh. And it was undergoing surgery for six hours, and it didn't make it. Oh, no. And the surgeon said that if it was barbless, it wouldn't have gotten hooked so many times, and they could have pulled it out and would have been like a one-hour surgery. So even after the fact, barbless is better if it gets ingested as well. Wow. Yeah. And there's so many human beings nowadays, we all just have to think about that and just yeah. be a little more conservation minded and mm -hmm. I mean whether you do it for fun or you you're, yeah. you're trying to catch it for food yeah it's definitely an angle that you have to think and and now because you are promoting it are you I heard that you're giving away some of the oh, hooks yes. to for Absolutely. people to try out yeah we give them uh, little bags like this okay at every fishing tournament Okay. So we have the smaller sizes there, oh, um, and we usually go go up to the 16.0 if you're going for Ulua, and we have everything down to the 14 uh, AH. If anyone wants to 
contact us and I'll give you my email address and phone number. You can put it on your video. Oh, great. A little later. Yeah. And we have all these decals too with the phone number on it that okay. you can put on your jackal box and whatever. Now, is there a program you guys are doing for the Kikis? Well, um, the Kiki fishing tournaments, we're always at those, and those are oh, always nice. 100% barbless, obviously, for safety reasons. Right. Um, and we'll teach them how to measure the fish, tie oh, the knots. Oh, great. That's beautiful. Yeah. And you can also get these Kiki angler booklets from us, too. Yeah, it's interesting to, to meet different people. You know, they all have their own style of fishing, their own beliefs, you yes. know, and so forth. But. Yeah. You know, when it comes down to preserving, you know, just to catch for fun, and you have barbless, it's so easy to pull it mm -hmm. out, throw it back in the water. Mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed that too. Mm -hmm. um, Does a lot less damage to the fish as well. That's right. Let it survive another day. Mm -hmm. And, and then when you catch your buddy, it yeah. <laughs> helps them too. You know, knock on wood, I've never <laughs> had that happen to me, but you know, it's just a matter of time that it's gonna happen one day. But um, yeah, in, in my recent videos too, I actually get caught a, a good size uh, omilu or ulua, a baby ulua, on a barbless too. Nice. And I was really excited because yeah. it, it, was, it was very active, you know, over the reef and everything. And um, I was very tense because I was thinking maybe I might lose it because of the barbless. But to realize, uh, you know, when it's hooked good, it it's ain't going anywhere. Man. Yeah. yeah. So definitely. I think it was a it was a good experience for me. Yeah. And I think when I use bait nowadays, um, I use all barbless now because it's it's, it's, a, it's a catch and release for me. Yeah. You know I don't really the ones that I do keep may be the hawkfish. Um, that's about it I think. message for the kids and the fishermen do you, is there anything that you want to say to the communities that that you want to spread the message yeah get out there and fish <laughs> <laughs> but um at the same time think about everyone else that has to share the resource now that there's so many people that are living here um and just leave it better than you found it you know you're right. gonna find even if it's not debris that or trash other people left 
So that'd be something that the ocean brought in from some other country. So maybe bring extra trash bags with you and clean that up because we know it's affecting our wildlife and entanglement hazards. What we call things like this, right? Are you familiar with or the fishing bags? nets and so forth? That would be around the turtle's neck, right there. Yeah. So right? this is actually an eel cone. So they use it to catch hagfish, which we don't have this fishery. Oh really? Here. Oh, That's I thought that was like a for plants or something. No. So <laughs> yeah, this is a, a fishing tool. So oh, these wow. will wash up on the beach all the time, and so anything that comes up with a loop, like even this, a cup, the animals will put their noses in. Um, and fish get stuck in these. Sometimes fish like turtles, yeah, seals. They'll be yeah. swimming in here as their habitat, and then they grow oh, too big and, and they'll get just... stuck in there. It's really unique. Wow. But yeah, just leave it better than you found it. Right. And enjoy the resource. Mm -hmm. Use it and eat the fish that you should be eating. Make sure they're the legal size. Make sure they don't have eggs. And all that information could be found yep. in these booklets. And, and we have these are really, really useful. We have some of these too, right? Oh, that one there, that's the yeah, one. and they're waterproof. Oh, look at that, guys. And it says oh. the seasons of which you can catch them and the minimum size. Oh, yeah, look at that. And how many you're allowed, so the bag limits. So you put the fish right on them. Oh, there's collars, the oils. Right, and on this side too. And then we have a booklet of regulations, especially like location based, where you can fish and when. Perfect. Very sophisticated road for that one bite. It was interesting. Stuff tough. Grilled ribeye, brought in bacon. I like it. So you got the barracuda out of your feet, huh? Is it out right now? Yeah, right okay, oh yeah. Ah, that's weird. <laughs>